Hey everyone, this is Bremster, and this is the next problem in my Sudoku problem series. This one was submitted by three people, Realmplana, Zeon Risk, and Crusader175. And if you looked at the thumbnail, you will possibly get an idea as to why. This is the first problem that is being flagged as very hard in my series. Um, when this was tested by some people, they got back to me after quite a long time and said, what? So yes, this is a very hard problem. And if you can't figure this one out for yourself, don't be ashamed. Uh, this one is very tricky. Um, and if you can figure this one out quite quickly, congratulations. So um, the rules in this one are fairly standard. So we've got the normal Sudoku rules. You cannot repeat digits um, in rows, columns, or boxes. Um, there are arrows and the digits that are placed on arrows, the sum of them gets placed into the arrow circle and the pink line or the purple line is a Renban line um, and must contain a set of uh, consecutive non-repeating digits in any order. So that's what we have for this problem. The goal is to get the cells marked with an X. Um, you grab a link to this one below. You're probably going to need a grid. Um, if you can do this one in your head, congratulations. Um, I couldn't. Um, and then, um, yeah, I feel free to pause the video and I will come back in a few seconds and try and explain how this one works. Okay, yeah, so it was always going to happen. This is the first Sudoku problem that um, uses set theory or set equivalence theory set theory, it's set or set equivalence theory. Set theory is set equivalence theory theory, so that's wrong. So how does this one work? So those of you who are familiar with set equivalence theory will probably recognize the, the pattern quite quickly. This is known, uh, often known as the ARD set, where these cells are equivalent. Um, and what I'll do is I'll go back um, and in similar, vaguely equivalent, and I will go through and I will explain that now. So what we need to do is we need to make sets of one to nine. We know that in the solved grid, this row, for example, is going to contain all of the digits from one to nine. And we know the same in that row, that row, and that row. So if we were to look at all of those, we would know in the final grid, that will be four ones through four nines. Now, if we do the same in these columns and we mark these five columns, so all of those five columns, let's do that in yellow, then what we know is in those five columns, we are going to have five ones through five nines. So we're going to have an extra set of one to nine in those. Now, any cell that is marked in both colors, for an equivalence point of view, if we remove it from one set of the digits one to nine, and we remove the same digit from the other, then we're removing it from both and we still maintain equivalence. If you've got two things that are identical and you remove the same thing from both, you still have two things that are identical. So if this was a one and we removed um, one from um, four sets of the digits one to nine um, and one from five sets of the digits one to nine, all you've done is drop them both by exactly the same thing. So these digits, we cancel each other out basically. And what we still have is we still have yellow is one set of the digits from one to nine more than blue. Now, what we have is this Renban line. Now a Renban line contains a set of non-repeating digits in any order but this is a nine cell long Renban line. So this must contain a set of the digits from one to nine. So if we just drop that out of yellow, then what we know is yellow had an extra set of the digits one to nine on top of blue, and now we've canceled that out. So blue and yellow are now exactly equivalent. This is a box of a Sudoku grid, which will contain the digits one to nine. This is the box of a Sudoku grid, which will contain the digits one to nine. One of them is blue, one of them is yellow. So we can just drop those out. And what we end up with is blue is exactly equivalent to yellow in this problem. Now, that gets us to the point where we can start the, the key deduction, but you need to do all of that first. And people who are familiar with set equivalent theory probably got to this fairly quickly. This next step is actually a little bit tricky because what, and I'm have, going to have trouble explaining this one and I've actually practiced it and I've not done it well yet. So what we need to ask ourselves is what can these digits be? So if these, this is a three cell arrow, this is a three cell arrow. So these can only be from six, seven, eight, nine, because the minimum you can put on this arrow is a uh, one, two, three. So these must be from six, seven, eight or nine, but these exact digits have to go up here. 
they must be an exact match. So whatever the largest digit is, let's say, um, must go into the arrow circle because there is no other way of doing this. If this was... Um, because basically you cannot have a larger digit on an arrow than is in its circle. So the largest digit in this is going to be in the circle. Now, then we need to think about what of the other digits of seven, eight, and nine, because there must be another, um, or what um, of the other digits from six, seven, eight, and nine can go on the arrow? Well, if this is a nine, you still can't put a seven or an eight onto a three cell arrow because on a three cell arrow, the largest digit you can put if it sums to a, six, a single digit where they, all, uh, where they all see each other is a six with one, two, six summing to nine. So this must be a nine. This must be a six, nine pair because I cannot put a seven or an eight into blue at all. Now, Here's where the the real trick, and this one it took me a while to spot, comes in. I, I found this pretty quickly. But what we now have is this is 9 plus 9 plus 9, which is 27. This is 9 plus 9, which is 18, and 6 plus 6. This could be the other way around. But either way, it's 9 plus 9 and 6 plus 6. So this is 18 plus 12, which is 30. So this sums to 27, this currently sums to 30. How do you make up the difference in things that are equivalent? This cell, which is counted twice in yellow, has to make up the difference between the 27 and the 30. And the only way to do that is to make this the three, therefore making this be the difference because this needs to um, contribute twice to this total so that... Um, the, the 27 and the 30 are equivalent. And that's the solution to the problem where you can figure out how to place those two. This is prob this is definitely the hardest one we've had so far. Um, I've had over, uh, over 40 submissions so far, and this is by far the hardest I've received, but it is beautiful when you see it. Um, hopefully you were able to figure this one out for yourself, and if you weren't, hopefully my explanation got you through it. Um, I'm not going to keep these all easy, and I'm not even going to keep them all medium. Sometimes these are going to get hard. Um, I've actually got quite a few hard ones that have been submitted, so the difficulty is starting to ramp up, and I'm hoping some people will submit some easier ones so I can keep the difficulty fluctuating. Um, but yeah, that one was absolutely beautiful when I finally found it. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I really do hope you're enjoying the series, and as always, particularly if you get ones like this, good luck with your solving.